Hello and welcome to Viper Bites and we are about to hit the waiver wire for week nine with my waiver wire targets that you need to be looking at. But before we do, make sure if you're not subscribed yet, you hit that subscribe button on the Vipers Network YouTube channel. Make sure to hit that like button. And if you're listening to us on Apple or Spotify, rate and review, that'd be greatly appreciated. If you got questions, make sure to drop them in the comments right now or head over to Twitter at MattDonnellyFF. Send me those questions and I'll send you my answers. That being said, as we head into week eight or week nine, pardon me, we have four teams on by right now that include the Detroit Lions, the Seattle Seahawks, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the Washington football team. We also have some quarterbacks right now that are sitting on the waiver wire that are have less than a 40% roster ship, and they include Justin Fields, Tua Tungavaloa, Daniel Jones, and Jimmy Garoppolo. Guys, you could definitely be targeting, but those are not the guys I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to talk about three lesser-known players right now that have even less roster ship right now, starting with New York Jets quarterback Mike White. Now, it's hard to argue why he shouldn't be the quarterback going forward for the New York Jets. He's basically turned last week into everything that the Jets brass wanted Zach Wilson to be leading up to it. He threw for 405 yards passing, three touchdowns. He even caught a two-point convert. And you know what? He's coming in hot Thursday night football. He's definitely a guy I want to get in on a two QB league or a super flex. A guy I can start this week and feel comfortable with it. Heck, I even started him last week and he paid off. Let's put it that way. Now, another quarterback I'm looking at this week is Taysom Hill. We watched what happened in New Orleans. They've lost Jameis Winston for the entire season. There was an ACL. Enter Taysom Hill. We know Sean Payton likes him. I don't know if he's a better option than Trevor Simeon, but you know he's going to play a factor in this Saints offense going forward. Whether or not he is the starting quarterback or not, Taysom Hill is going to have some run with this offense. Now, another quarterback I'm looking at coming back from injury is Tyrod Taylor. Now, Davis Mills, he performed well in garbage time last week. Heck, the Rams had the Texans by the throat there, uh, 38 nothing. I think, at one point, give or t- I don't know. I don't, I'm not fact-checking here, and hopefully neither are you. But I believe when the coach says that Tyrod Taylor, this is his job when he comes back, Tyrod Taylor, he's coming back. So, you know what? If you're, again, in two QB leagues, super flex, he's a guy you can definitely add to your lineup right now. He's going to give you a little bit of extra, especially as we navigate through these bye weeks coming up. Now, at the running back position, I'm going to start with Tyrod Taylor's backfield mate here in David Johnson. We know what's happening in Houston. We know that they're going to be facing a negative game script week in and week out. David Johnson watched Mark Ingram head off to the Big Easy, leaving just him and Philip Lindsay in that backfield there for touches. I think David Johnson is going to see an increase in those touches, get a good chunk of what Ingram uh, is vacating. Plus, he's going to get more run in the passing game. And we know that the Texans are going to be passing because they're going to be trailing a lot. That is where David Johnson becomes the most effective. He's a guy that you're going to want to get into that third flex spot if possible. Now, when I say this, you got to remember, another four, three more running backs here, or four more running backs that have a less than a 40% roster ship include Rashad Penny, Mark Ingram, Ty Johnson, and Jared Patterson. Guys, you could awfully be t- targeting as well, but not guys I'm targeting. Another one I'm targeting, though, is Philadelphia Eagles running back, Boston Scott, not Kenneth Gainwell, not Jordan Howard. Even though Jordan Howard was productive, 12 carries, 57 yards, and two touchdowns, which was pretty much identical to what Boston Scott got at 12 carries, 60 yards, and two touchdowns. Kenneth Gainwell had, well, let's just call it he had zero touchdowns, okay? Now, I don't see Jordan Howard to continue that kind of production here. I think Gainwell will cut into that a little bit while Miles Sanders out, but I think Boston Scott has earned himself that role going forward. Boston Scott's a guy I think you could play as a sneaky flex option this week and probably in the week after that as well. Now, we talk about injuries to the running back position. We talk about how volatile it's been so far. James Robinson is day-to-day, just like you and I. Now, in his absence, should he miss time, Carlos Hyde's a guy who can give you some production off the bench. Last week, 13 touches, 51 yards. He can get the job done, and if Robinson misses, you know that there's a high-volume play in the Jacksonville backfield, and Carlos Hyde comes into play on that. Definitely think about putting a waiver claim in for him. Now, the biggest news of the running back position comes out of Tennessee, and it is the loss of the King. Derrick Henry is going to be missing about the next eight weeks with that broken foot, and we know how hard it is for a big man to come back and play with a broken foot. I would not expect him back any sooner than that eight-week period. I know there's rumblings that six weeks could be on the minimal. I'm not expecting that. Then again, I'm not a doctor, and I'm definitely not a uh, Derrick King. So, or Derrick King. <laughs> Derrick Henry. See how I'm getting a little confused there. Now, when we talk about this, Jeremy, Jeremy McNichols is going to get the first bit of run, the first bit of play there, especially how effective he had been in the passing game. 
There has been weeks where he was the leading receiver, uh, and then he what he can do in the running game. But they went out and they signed another two thousand yard rusher, Adrian Peterson, who I think it's Adrian Peterson. He is basically a freak of nature, just like Derrick Henry. Expect him to be in football shape right off the get go because of how well conditioned is. He's just a different dog altogether. Make sure to get that waiver wire claim in. I think he's the top priority for me, at least, when it comes to the waivers this week. Now, at the wide receiver position, Tua Tungvaloa, he is absolutely balling out here. He gets to face the Houston Texans after listening all season about Deshaun Je- uh, Watson coming to Miami and how Tua is going to head to Houston. He now gets to line up opposite of the Texans here. And he's got two weapons in Devontae Parker and Will Fuller. I think you can go get on the waivers right now. Sure, Jalen Waddell, he's going to be productive as usual. Mike Gusecki's going to be productive. But Devontae Parker and Will Fuller have a lot less roster ship right now. Not quite as bad as Jamal Agnew, Russell Gage, Nico Collins, Alan Lazard, who are all rostered less than 15%. But look, the Dolphins face the Texans. Like I said, Parker was solid last week in his return from injury. Eight catches on 11 targets, 85 yards. Fuller was also eligible to return last week, but I think he might have been saving himself for this revenge game against his former team there in Houston. I think Will Fuller is going to have a huge week. I think Tua Tonga Valoa is going to have even a bigger week. Mark down Will Fuller for at least one touchdown and 100 yards receiving. I, I just have a big feeling that's going to be a big day for the Dolphins passing game here. Now, another big play receiver is Van Jefferson of the Los Angeles Rams. Deshaun Jackson just got released. They granted him his release, and you know what? It's because of Van Jefferson. They really didn't even need Deshaun Jackson to validate what Van Jefferson could do. He was already the number three when it came to targets and production, the wide receiver position for the Rams, but he has been the big play guy for Matt Stafford all season. We know Matt Stafford. He likes to air it out. Last week, it only took Jefferson three catches to put up 88 yards, and each and every week, especially in best ball, Van Jefferson is a solid play. Now, another wide receiver, I talked about Will Fuller coming back from injury. Devontae Parker came back from injury last week. Michael Gallup, he is looking like he's ready to come back. And even Cooper Rush made this Dallas Cowboys offense look explosive. Could you imagine what Michael Gallup's going to do with Dak coming back this week? Oh, boy. Make sure to get yourself some Michael Gallup. Now, I talked about Mike White replacing Zach Wilson. Well, on Thursday, the Jets get the Colts, who are the seventh most generous team when it comes to wide receivers this year and for me I think that go-to guy is going to be Jamison Crowder once again White and Crowder were in sync completing eight of nine passes for 84 yards in that win against Cincinnati last week look for that to continue this week I think Crowder is going to find the end zone I think he's going to hit 100 yards as well so I think if you're looking for that DFS stack that's on the low down that cheap stack I think Mike White and Jamison Crowder could be a very sneaky play especially if you're looking for that advantage on everyone else that's playing DFS. you got to find that way to differentiate. Then again, I'm not a big DFS guy, but I think this is a really sneaky play. Now, at the tight end position, I will never, ever say Evan Ingram. Yes, he outscored Travis Kelsey last week. Yes, Evan Ingram finally caught a pass and turned it into a touchdown. And yes, Evan Ingram will not be in my roster at all, period, end of discussion. Who might get a look is Pat Fryermuth. Now, if we're looking beyond this week and we're looking down the road, Fryermuth is a guy who I think is ready to go off at any time now. I'm probably still taking a wait-and-see approach, but I feel comfortable adding him on the waivers this week right now. Now, I always preach about getting ahead of your league mates, being early rather than being late. And that comes down to Logan Thomas of the Washington Football Club. The tight end position, we've talked about it in length, how volatile that is as well. we got bye weeks coming in we've got injuries we've dealt with we've dealt with Waller and Dawson Knox in previous weeks now Logan Thomas has been dropped in a lot of leagues because of that hamstring injury they suffered a few weeks back he had that little stint on the IR now is the time to get him Washington is on a bye this week he's ready to come back in week 10 he's going to be practicing all this week make sure to get that waiver claim in tonight before the rest of your league catches on and then finally my last little play here my last little tight end kind of waiver target is Dan Arnold Arnold played 72% of the snaps for the Jags last week against Seattle. He had had posted a team best eight catches for 68 yards. He had 10 targets. He had a 19% target share and a season high 14.8 fantasy points. Okay, that's all good. 
Where's that consistency? Well, he's also seen five or more targets in three straight games. Again, we talked about this just two seconds ago. When you're dealing through these bye weeks right now, especially the tight end position, any value you can get is a bonus, and Dan Arnold is going to give you that each and every week. If you don't have one of the big dogs, he's a guy who could flirt with tight end one production one week to another. I wouldn't count on it, but there's a possibility of that. It's not out of the realm of possibilities, if I may. With that all being said, we're going to wrap this up, but make sure you head over to the Vipers Network, especially on Tuesdays at 10 p.m. Eastern when we bring the ViperCast powered by the Fantasy Points Media Group. Uh, myself, Major, Tara, and Calvin, we're going to be bringing a little bit of a week nine preview this time. It'll start to sits to go along with our waiver wires. And of course, bold predictions. Head over there right away. Check out each and every show. Appreciate your support going forward. And you know what? We'll see you then. All right. Take care.